that those turnovers have a, a way of coming back and haunting you. Boston College had four of them in his football game, and now Woodard's got the ball over midfield. In the 45, stunt still. Scrambles around, he may take off here, and will. And goes out of bounds wisely to stop the clock. Picked up about seven yards to the 38 and got out with 1.20 to go. What a dream come true for Darren Studstill. Being able to lead this football team down the field, have a chance to win a game that could put you in a championship game for the national championship. Nebraska has already beaten Oklahoma. West Virginia trying to come from behind in the last 80 seconds to beat Boston College and remain perfect as well. Second down and three. Studstill. Completes it to the 24-yard line, and Mike Baker has cooked up two big catches on this drive. Mike Baker caught that ball right on the sideline. One of the things that you see in a two-minute drill by the defense is they start to get a little bit nervous. This time, Michael Reed pushes him out right here, but just is able to get both of his feet in. And he's done it. Stud still, and the near offense without using that one final timeout they had left. First and ten. Stud still fires. Touchdown! Ed Hill and West Virginia in front. <laughs> 24 yards. Ed Hill's first catch of the day and certainly the biggest of the season for the Mountaineers. Now, West Virginia needs to go for two in this situation to make it a three-point game. What a play, what a throw, what a drive. <laughs> Nealon trying to sort everything out on the sideline. A one-point game. The extra point does you no good. As Gary said, you may as well go for two. 108 left. The question is, has West Virginia left too much time on the clock for Glenn Foley? Here's another look at how the Mountaineers score. Props back. West Virginia rushing five people. Man-to-man -man coverage to the outside. You see Shorter just gets turned around a little bit. Hill makes the play. Whenever you're running bump and run coverage and you have your back to the quarterback and you don't see the ball, you're at the mercy of the ride receiver. He sees it, you don't, you stop, make the catch, give yourself and a chance, your team a chance for the national championship. I tell you, what Don Nealon told us, he's gonna be searching Jerry Punch up after this game. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, get ready. 68 seconds from a perfect regular season. Stud still, the quarterback now will bring him up for a two-point conversion. You have to wonder if West Virginia will lose, use a little option football with Stud still skills here to try to pick up two. Walker and Woodard in the backfield behind him. He rolls out and throws, and he's got his man. And it's a three-point game. He got it to Jay Kerning. 17-14. Mountaineers. Can Glenn Foley do it again? He has much the same look he had last week against Notre Dame. The chin strap is already snapped as if to say, just let me get back out there. He's got 108 to work, two timeouts left, but here's Studstill who hooks up with Kearney for two. Stud still going to his left, and when you go to your left, you almost have to come off, off your feet to throw it. He throws a strike. Kearney grabs it, holds on to it. You can see on the bench. Come on, baby, come on. Yes, three-point game. You know, sometimes things are just meant to be. And Glenn Foley, last game of the season, West Virginia has a shot at playing for the national championship. They have to stop the hottest quarterback in the country. Don Nealon said, Yesterday, if we beat Boston College and finish 11-0 and are not in a game for the national championship, you guys are going to have to come and bail me out of jail. <laughs> and that's what he told his players, too. If we win this football game and we're not playing for it, 
Can't say the rest of what he said, <laughs> but part of it was we're going to have to bail me out of jail. Sports Center coming up following our game. They'll try to sort out the college football mess and everything else that's going on, including a lot of big basketball games. We've got three coming up tonight, but right now we have got 68 seconds of electricity remaining at Alumni Stadium. The kick to Ransom at the two-yard line. They need some field position. And boy, did they almost have more than that. That may have been a touchdown saving tackle on that kick return by Mike Logan. So here comes Glenn Foley and the Boston College offense. 102 left. Yeah, there's David Gordon, but David Gordon isn't as important this week as he was last week. If Boston College wants to win the game, the best he can do this week is tie. It was Gordon's 41 yarder, a career long, that beat number one Notre Dame. Foley was brilliant in the drive a week ago, calmly taking the Eagles down to that field position for Gordon's kick. Let's see how he does this time. Too far for Clarence Cannon. David Gordon missed a 40-yarder against Northwestern that could have won that game and then came back against Notre Dame and won it. He had one blocked by the Mountaineers' David Mayfield last year that could have won the game. So he's got a 1-1-1 one, one, and one mark on the graphic you just looked at. West Virginia's in with their dime look. They've got six defensive backs in the game. Holy great catch. That was not an easy catch by Anthony Comer, and he takes it out of bounds for a pickup of about four or five. Third down and five coming up. That part is really academic. The clock, and now Boston College saying they got out of bounds, and I thought they did. The clock continuing to run. Well, he should take a timeout. Foley with 30 seconds left. Gets it to Comer again. Penalty markers down. Everybody was sure he got out of bounds, but what they said, his forward progress was stopped. I thought that was a very poor call on the side. Illegal formation. Offense. So a double blast of bad news for BC. They didn't get out of bounds. They let precious time tick off the clock, and then an illegal formation backs them up further. Here's the previous play when Boston College thought they were out of bounds. You see him going forward. Comer is clearly out of bounds. That's a very poor call by the referees, and that's what confused Glenn Foley on that play. Well, it had us confused, and obviously, Tom Coughlin feels the same way. He was just under the assumption, as that clock continued to wind down, that his man had gotten out of bounds. Foley still trying to talk to the referee about it, and now they'll start the clock at 25. As Foley on third down and 10. Fires, completes it. And it's going to be good enough for a first down with forward progress, but now they're going to have to get a timeout with 17 seconds to go. Pick up of 13. Time for about three more plays for the Eagles. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be able to play, throw three plays like that if they want to win the game. If they want to try a long field goal, they'll be able to throw those 15-yard passes. On that last play, he was forced to do it because of the mix-up on the timeout call. I'm sure Steve Dunlap will stay in zone and force the throws underneath. Timeout with 17 seconds to go. In the year 23,012 B.C. Unbeaten team. Give us a Sugar Bowl or a Cotton Bowl berth, they might have an argument. 17 seconds and less left. Foley fires. Man there. Out of bounds at the 40 to Michael Campbell with 10 seconds left. Nice play. They fake Campbell that time to hitch and go, and then he double hitched on the play. They need one more pass to get it around the 20 to 25-yard line to have a real legitimate shot on a field goal. And get back. 10 seconds to go, and they still have a timeout, so they can't throw the ball anywhere on the football field. First down, 10 seconds left. Foley. Going deep. It's going to be intercepted. And the Mountaineers will win. And it's Mike Logan. And West Virginia's perfect regular season 
is safe. Don Nealon and his Mountaineers for the second time have finished a regular season with an unblemished mark as they did in 88. They've done it again with an interception on the final play of the game and they beat Boston College. A come from behind 17 to 14 win. And Don Nealon said, I'll find you, Jerry Punch, if we win this game. I'm with him. Go ahead, Jerry. We're with Coach Don Nealon. And Coach, congratulations on an incredible second half. Oh, I'm telling you. To be honest, I'm not real sure we even deserve to win the game. Our kids hung in there, and we finally got something going at the end. And uh, these kids have never quit all year. They've really busted it. Uh, I thought uh, Boston College just played a great football game. I really did. Uh, I think Tom and his staff were outstanding. And, you know, last year we couldn't get one break, and this year we got a lot of them. So, good Lord's been with us. We'll take it. That's 11-0, that's and 0, baby. 11-0. and 0. Hey, Coach, is the win big enough for consideration for a national championship? You're 11-0. Well, my feeling is very simple. A team that loses doesn't do everything in their power to have a chance to play for the national championship. This team has won every single game, played four or five bowl teams. Certainly, we ought to be given the opportunity to play. Did Nebraska win today? Nebraska won, yes, sir. Well, in my opinion, if us two don't play, then it's strictly political. And I don't care how good Florida State is. That's not the idea. This team beat the team that beat Notre Dame. And it's just as obvious. As dumb as I am, I can figure that out. We should be playing Nebraska for the national championship. Congratulations to Tom Osborne. He's great. Coach, congratulations. Don Nealon headed off the field, guys. He's very adamant they belong in the Orange Bowl against the Big A champion, Nebraska. They beat the man that beat the man that beat the man. 11-0 for West Virginia with a 17-14 win. For Gary Danielson, Charlene Hawks, Jerry Punch, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Stay tuned. Sports Center is coming up next. And more college basketball yet tonight.